Motions, questions? Motion. Okay. Second. All right. Gary made the motion. Tracy seconded to approve the law enforcement contract with the city of Garrison. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Transportation, but I don't see it on the agenda. Uh, it was Tim Rothschild. Mm -hmm. Must have got deleted, but I thought it was on there. Yeah, he's resigning. You don't see it anywhere, do you, fellas? No. Transportation. Yeah, it was a resignation, but it got tweaked when we moved things around. Okay. All right. Well. Sorry. Can't do anything on that. Then. I'll put it back on there next week. Then. Officially. Okay. Thank you. Do you yeah, I'll have to put it back piece? on there. Okay. Item four, we're waiting for Ron, the sheriff, on that. How about item nine discuss cares act funding for yep. local public health so we got notice of a twenty-four thousand three eighty four deposit and it's from the cares act funding for local public health from the governor's office so the state allocated so much money for grants for local county health departments based on a per capita so it's got the list of how the funds can be used and if we don't use it by December 30th we have to give it back so we give back nothing <laughs> so like emergency medical response expenses medical transportation um, I don't there's some of it could be like wages like I just discussed um, for our employees public safety measures for expenses for quarantining individuals. So to me, that kind of covers that. Um, no, I'm good. So I just thought we should discuss that and maybe when Mark's in here too, since public health, I don't know what, what types of things you guys have thought of, but we just got it and we only have like six weeks to spend it. So but Which, we can use it for uh, employee the, leave and that Yeah, type of so thing. if you want to share that. Coded? It was different things. I wish I would have known that before my amendment. I could have added spending authority somewhere, but we can make it work or amend service areas. So, are we going to get it used up? I don't know. It's it's automatic deposit, so we are we had to put it in the in the general basic. So. How much is it? Twenty four three eighty four. Yep. And I told you last week I got that three hundred and twenty five thousand. Mm hmm coming in and then we're still working on FEMA so yeah oh. Ron's got FEMA stuff to do did you get her stuff because uh. she's gonna be calling us there's uh. I don't know how I'm gonna get that I know it's I don't keep those records that's what I don't she wanted to know on the courthouse maintenance records too so I don't know well, Sometimes is, it's a lot of work for the, the FEMA stuff, if we're going to get, I don't. Well, I'm going to get it on one car. The car, one car, I can see that, but like some of that other, oh, like we can't give them what they want. This talks about expenses for disinfection mm -hmm. in public areas. Can we and order? actually, I talked to Rick Bramo yesterday. He's getting an additional... $700 thing like for the bathrooms that he can just it's handheld and he can go in there more often Okay, good. So we have so one of those we coming. We utilize so the that. money for that probably the chemicals for the disinfectant and Right, but some of that I can't double dip. So say if no, I've already I, I shared that with could, FEMA, I can't But you could that. already, I mean you could order additional. Right. Yes. So what we've already 
Yeah. Um, yeah. It's well, it's tough because I can't. The money's there. We need to utilize it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, you could ask the public health department if in the hospital. Being the disinfected and stuff. I envision this being part of life moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. I, I presume you disinfect your squad cars. And I know they do the buses. You know this type of thing. So good morning, Mark. Morning. I don't see it changing. Yeah. And maybe like we could talk to Mark and Mark too if they see when they go up to the public health meeting. I think it can utilize to our local hospital too. So. Oh yeah. They do. I wonder if you, uh, like the sheriff's office disinfecting the squad cars. Have you got a handheld unit or anything of that nature? We're using the same unit for everything. Okay, you can you you can. It's a car out. with I don't know, fifty or seventy-five foot of hose on it. See, Bremo thought that it was so cumbersome, so he's got another one coming, a handheld one, so we can go around in the bathrooms and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and it works good in our building, so we can just park it outside of a cell and go in and. Well, but if you need one for more portability, you know, this would be the thing to utilize to, to be ordered. And so, and that's what we have over at the service center, the a portable unit. Has anybody talked to the hospital? I am not. I wanted to talk to you guys first. Are you seeing the ready expenses of public hospitals? Katie said she got these. She mentioned that same amount yesterday. Well, I talked to, I did tell Katie oh. in an email, so maybe she was bringing that up. Because I told her to get hold of you because she knew how it was done, and she said she got that. Yes, I, I shared that with her. Yep. Said she also got a large amount, but I'm afraid she had to track stuff from the beginning to get that. Yeah, that's why I'm so glad we started marking COVID on our stuff from the, from the beginning. Okay. Well, we can move on here. Uh, shall we go to item four, which is approve the vehicle purchase for rural access point, driver in the center. Uh, we located a used Dodge, 2004 Dodge Journey. 14. Yes. Uh, 2014 Dodge Journey SXT all-wheel drive. Uh, I think that would serve their purpose as well. Uh, we did tell them we would agree to the price if they put new tires on it. It was a local trade. An old neighbor of mine will well, pay a visit to it and make sure there's no issues with it. And the total price is ninety nine seventy seven. So, what's the mileage on something like this? Uh, it was right at a hundred, I believe. This price is not on there. How many miles a year do you anticipate they would put on? Not many. Okay. Five to ten. All right. Okay. Last. All right. Long time. Now get rusted out before. Well, that's the out. problem. Things rust out before they're worn out now. Now you've had some issues with a certain size motor, wasn't that the, the V6? Yes. That you had issues with? Yes, this is not the, I don't do not believe, because I asked about that. This is not the same motor, yeah. different configuration. The newer Durango's, the two we just got, we've had no issues yet, but they are uh, equipped with the V8. Mm -hmm. okay. hmm. All right. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? Um, yeah. Is there a motion to approve the vehicle purchase for the rural access point? So move. Second. Okay. Tracy made the motion to approve that purchase. Gary seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.
Okay. Okay. Subject so to, to your approval, of course. Yep. I'm going to <coughs> rearrange some stuff I have to do personally so I can be back at 10. Yep. For October. Yep. That's See you good. then. Thank you. How are you today, Mark? I'm okay, thanks. How are you? Doing well. That's good. Keep it that way. Yeah. I don't know how to keep everything straight. We got lots of folders. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> it's a lot sometimes. Yep, I got mine. I mean, uh, we were at that one down there, that's so much conflict of interest. He needs a little well, fixing, no, doesn't it, Mark? You that chair was sitting uh, there, it's horrible. Uh, <laughs> Make my husband come fix I, it. I'm a little rocket. It just squeaks like crazy. Oh. Gina's a woodworker's daughter, she'll fix her up for us. I thought I was sitting reasonably still. <laughs> this one is perfect, but it's not as bad. I talked to him yesterday. I think. Is it John Tuthill? Come in for Wandling Quarries? Say what? I'm sorry. Is it John Tuthill from Wandling Quarries? Tuthill got a hold of me. Oh, he did, so he's not coming in. I talked to him. Well, actually, no, I didn't. I tried to talk to him yesterday afternoon later, but he called this morning. So. Okay, so I was going to say he called us yesterday. Yeah. He's a uh, adjacent property owner of the next one. I don't know if you remember John Tidehill. He was with Wendling Quarry. He was here when we did the sand pit approval up north of town. Don't remember him. Yeah, I was curious. He does our land acquisitions and things like that. Got a DeWitt. watch you're looking at. Close yeah, enough. Go for it. This application that we have this morning for a change in land use that I've given you is from Robert and Christina Maynard at 6010 32nd Avenue, Shellsburg. Maynard would like to build a new single family dwelling on one acre of land that they own. It's here in section 27 of Bent Township. Sets approximately right up here, almost a mile north of the intersection of 61st Street and 32nd Avenue, which is the Old Grove Church. There is, and you can see by the, he did a really nice sketch, reasonably nice sketch there, and then of course the uh, aerial that I've given to you, you can see that there is an existing home on this acreage. Here's the, here's the home right here, and then there's this building. And then there's this open area right here that 
that land this year did was planted to beans. It's not a real large area, but it, it is basically the new home site. I highlighted it in yellow for you. It's basically right here. And then I did take a photograph of what that little area right here looks like as far as the ground. This ground right here, like I said, it wasn't in production this year, but it has a 68 CSR. It's part of this building site area, but it's extending on down. It will need a new driveway, and he's drawing it on his map, but essentially the driveway would come off of 32nd Avenue, traverse in right down here south of the home, and then come back up the way that he drew it. Randy did review that. It's fine for sight distance, and so there's no issue with them issuing a driveway permit there. This site also will need a new well and a septic system. This, this is just like everything else out here in this area. It's all basically the same soil type. It only differs from slope. And whenever I do a land use change like this, I mention the fact that it may not be a conventional septic system. We have sand filter systems, a lot of them up and down this road. That's not a big deal, but it's just people hear that and they get a little excited because there's more expense. And so I always like to be sure that I've disclosed that and let them know that's a possibility. And then I think it's relevant that you know it. It's not a big deal. It, basically, we're going to treat water in a wastewater in a very excellent manner, but it's just a different system. So anyway, that's the situation there. Both of those projects will get done under permit and, and I see no issues with that whatsoever. Um, this location right here, you've seen other land use changes recently right here. We have several residences around here. Um, we just recently had the application for uh, the folks that wanted to do the wedding venue there. Just down the road and on the other side of the road to the south of this slightly. Um, there aren't any animal feeding operations of any significant size here. There is cattle obviously in the area on pasture to the west of this. And from just basically when I look at this application, looks like Robert wants to have some animals on this ground here as well. There are buildings for that, and obviously that's okay. Um, we notified eight adjacent property owners, and we also placed legal notices in the official newspapers of Benton County, as we're required to do. I received no comments before today's hearing about this at all. Um, this land is family land, been in the family for years. Um, Owen Maynard lived here, um, was his father, and basically mom lives in the existing home right now, and Robert and his wife want to build a new home and be here as well, and that's, I, I see no conflict whatsoever with our ordinance or our account plan. That's all I have about it. Any, Any questions? Questions, gentlemen? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay. To approve. Yep. Okay. All right. Gary made the motion. Tracy seconded to approve the land use change for Robert and Christina Maynard. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. I will tell Robert here shortly. Waiting for the next one. Is there any reports, gentlemen? Okay. Uh, well, I, I guess I, I can speak a little bit. I was out to the kind of step on the I was out to the new building and it was looking good. Okay. Any other reports? And five different uh Businesses in there working yesterday, and the uh, IT guy from Des Moines was there. CV installation from Cedar Rapids, insulation in the attic, uh, start construction was finishing up, picking up these tools, getting out of there. Evening, the electrician was there, and also Edwards running the ductwork. Good, good. Looked like a bunch of rats running around there. Good evening. Right. Very good. Did Trevor tell you that I brought you a No, because I was No. No. <laughs> um, 
probably too busy. We're finally out. We're finally out of address. Yes, you did. Yeah. It's going to be 9th Street or, or oh. 9th Street, 611 or 9th Street. 24th yeah. How about with the city? Any luck getting that guy wire moved? So if you have any suggestions, just uh, to wisely. To, they were supposed to come last Friday and put the trans. You can have I'll take it all. Don't. We should get the bonuses. I don't. I don't think hopefully that then, uh, hopefully we don't have I any have any needs for it. That to do a lot of I know that uh, yeah. Katie does, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 She sent out a photo yeah. 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 last week. Meeting in the morning. Barb maybe told you that Bardell yeah. Yeah. needs it seven. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she sent out a print out in all the counties. I don't There's think a lot it's of big money for some of the larger counties. Right. 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 That's on our per the count. Last time I went by it, all right. Like I was only going to get 20 or 15,000, I think I saw. So I also sent that photo to Myron. That's a good deal. Yes, we already got it deposited. Hey, this is north here. This is uh, north. Uh, you not have the wind like we did. Correct. Correct. I did. See that, Mark? Well, oh, we, need, we need to have the tire. I think it's secondary top. roads that did that tile, but I don't it, know if they wouldn't throw the tire in. Where is that at? Oh, it's. It's out it's by his shed. That's out by Henry's Welding. Out by Henry's Welding. <laughs> Close to Haley's house. <laughs> yeah, blame me. I'm <laughs> writing no Did you put that tire up there? That's here. a really nice <laughs> ornament on top. Yeah, there. well, I'm sure nobody knows Pulling how to pile it. Down. Huh? Pull in the pile down <laughs> yeah. the whole way. Yeah. I, I'm convinced no one knows how it ever got there. But, you know, it, it rolled up there on a passerby vehicle. The ratio landed it perfectly. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? It twirled around and then it fell down right there. <laughs> That, that almost looks like one of the sprayer type tires in the flotation it's flotation type. type. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, we got to get it going and keep it going, Mark. That, <laughs> I mean, how many times I've heard this? Yeah. <laughs> keep the fire going. So there some uh, guys who aren't supposed to be burning tires are. Oh well, we got to get it going and keep it going. Mm. This. Uh, uh, and a CS ballot. Stephen Williams, you guys got any problem with that? Um, he's the he's only guy on the ballot. <laughs> kind of like a judge. <laughs> yes or no, huh? Well, if you guys don't have any problem with it, I'll send it back, I guess. I don't really... Can't say I ever played cards with him. Kind of interesting, really, that they would send another government agency a ballot. But I guess we do have property. Mm -hmm. Mm Number seven, you took care of that yesterday, right? Um, yes, she talked to Myron, so she will not be in. Okay. Because Myron had nothing for the agenda, so I got a hold of her. Well, Myron will be in here at all, unless he comes in for the COVID. Yeah, that's what I would guess.
Can't remember if RJ told me he was coming today or not. Mark, before we get started here, I got a couple questions. I guess one of them was, how does this work on some of these houses that got destroyed? going to be destroyed from the direct or and they're building new houses they don't have to get they just they'll just have to deal with a new septic tank here's here's the situation that i've been dealing with with those anybody that had a pre-existing home there and if it's destroyed they knock it down they're free to rebuild there because it was pre-existing mm -hmm. i'm certainly not going to uh take the, an extreme approach and say they got to come before us or whatever the house has been there this was no control of theirs obviously septic system can be a little bit funky uh, by that i mean um, say we have an old house that's got an old discharging system non-compliant they're building new um, it's going to need to be compliant and so i've had to work through some of those things with folks um, for the most part, um, the homes that I've had contact with, or the people I've had contact with that are redoing their homes, it's usually simply a matter that we may have to upgrade it slightly. As in, maybe the house was built in 1985 and it was for a three bedroom home. Now that they're rebuilding, they may decide to put in another bedroom or add on or something like that. And so what I'm doing is, is trying to work through that with folks where um, it had a thousand gallon tank because it was three bedroom back then. The requirement now for a four bedroom is 1,500 gallons, so we upgrade the tank. Either we put in a new one or we add to it if we can. And typically I've been doing those kind of things with just a repair permit. So I don't make them buy the whole, it, it's not a new system necessarily. If it's a new system, they have to get a, get a new permit. But by and large we haven't had too many issues along that line it's just been primarily that we're um, upgrading and repair i've had several though that everything was fine and they just hook up to it and go and so that's been a good thing next when will it be early december here we have a you'll be getting a land use change for the business that i did not know existed and when I got contacted about it, it's not a, not, I, I told the man, I said, we're not going to make a federal case out of this, but we need to get to legal. And uh, there was a repair business going on out of this building. Well, the, the building that was happening, his home is destroyed, and they wanted to move into this building, so that's what they're doing temporarily, but it needed a septic system, and that's how I discovered all of this. The building that he had had is just for storage and whatnot blew away. He's going to rebuild that building, but that's going to house the building. And so this is all working nicely, but it's going to come before you and it, it will need approval. But there was a non-compliant business there that does need to be reviewed and approved by this board. And But it's all, in my mind, it's all going to work out fine. But um, so there, there, it just depends on our situation. But from a land use point of view, mostly with the homes and whatnot, they're pre-existing and we're not making them do any rules and regulations. Septic system sometimes does come into play. So, not, not really been any issues with it that I'm aware of. Um, yeah, we've had some fires and things like that, but that's the way that goes, so. Okay. Can you answer my question? Pardon? You answer my question. Good. It's, uh, well, it's just like anybody else has been dealing with this. It's like early on here, uh, it was so frustrating and God, you know, you're going out there and you're regulatory in nature and you're trying to help these folks get back together and how can we make a, make it work for everybody, you know, it was, God, it was, I know you'll be getting a phone call from some people from Cedar Apples that they, they are going to want to build a new house on property they own. And uh, maybe I spoke out of turn, but I said they're act, they own the farm. They actually engaged in farming. Mm -hmm. They're going to build a new house on their ground. Mm -hmm. But I said they need to contact you. That's how it all starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. 
Good. Come do in your house. Okay, sir. Okay. I'm gonna take one last look, see if I can see. This application I gave you here is from R.J. Meyer, um, otherwise known as Jim. Um, we're at 5588 22nd Avenue Trail, Benton. It's in section 36. Eighty-six eleven or Cedar Township. It's approximately right in here where the 22nd shows up on the map where this location is. If you look at this extra aerial that I gave you, it tells you a lot. This is Jim's current residence and shop building. There's an acreage here that isn't Jim, but Jim owns all of this and it goes over here. It has this large pond. goes on down like here. And then there's another acreage right here that exists that's been there for years and years. What is going on here is, is that Jim would like to convert what is a pavilion right down here by the big pond that's right here on that aerial. He'd like to convert that pavilion, which I believe is what, 24, 24 by 36. He'd like to convert that into living quarters. A residence, small residence, obviously, but a residence. This property right here, the home, the shop, and the adjoining land is sold. And what he's what, what he's doing, there's a survey. I have actually a copy of the survey. I didn't copy it for you, but I'll just show you. This line's going to come down behind this pavilion, go over like this to the 40 line, and then straight south. So all of this gets sold. He's going to retain this pavilion with this land, or this pond that's on this land over here. And this would become his summer home. He's going to be wintering down south in Arkansas, I believe, and he'll live here in the summertime. Now, this is being split, and there's no issue with that because these issues that, or excuse me, these splits that occurred before our older splits, they were done prior to 1995, which is the date of our first subdivision ordinance. So this was allowed to be split, leaving this parcel here, even though there's this and Wendland Quarry site that was split off several years ago. This parcel here is still for sale. So there's a, there's a remote possibility that this might not ever happen, but if indeed he retains this and keeps it, he wants to have the ability to convert this. He was going to start converting it soon due to the circumstances with the storm, building situation, COVID, everything else. He decided to postpone his plans, but he would like to be able to have the change in case he wants to convert that pavilion into living quarters. Long term, I have had the discussion with him that if somebody buys this and they want to build a home on this, that will require a land use change from you just like anything else. There could be then this, could be a residence on this property already. It could be a, a small residence for a family member or something like that, but let's just use the example, say Haley bought all of this or whatnot, she wanted to build here, I would be calling for a land exchange again for this particular home. Because all we're looking at is, is changing the use of this one acre right here. All right, so that's, that's our situation in a nutshell. This will require a septic system for this, obviously. There is water here, and the well is down here. That well was drilled for the express purpose of keeping that pond full. And that is a well that has a withdrawal permit. Um, it was issued for a withdrawal of lots and lots of gallons per day. And, uh, but anyway, there is a well here that can serve this, and so there's no issue with that. So conforming wasn't drilled that long ago. So that's what we're doing, that's all he wants to do. The land obviously is not in production, hasn't been. The ground that's under that pavilion is a 61 CSR anyway, but it's all mowed, nicely mowed. It looks like a golf course basically, or a park, if, if you've seen it at all. And uh, that, that's pretty much it. Now, the driveway access, 
obviously it's been here. There's a driveway up here off of 22nd Avenue that wraps around and comes down by the pond. That would be the driveway that will serve this particular project. Randy's looked at that, looked at that, and that driveway is fine. Meets all of our county criteria. It was done with the county's blessing back when it was built. So there's no issue there. Surrounding land uses, there are several. Homes all up and down here. Home here, here, here. And then we have Wendling Quarries here to the north and to the west. Wendling Quarries is an active mining operation there, as you know. That's the old Coots Quarry site that Wendling owns. Um, John Tuthill, as we mentioned here earlier, had called about it. John told me that he has no concerns about this project here uh, from the standpoint that it's the same person that has owned and lived in that home. And without him saying it, I suspect the concern is, is that there's mining activity going on here, there's noise, there's booms, there is dynamiting at times, and so that's just something that they're, they're aware of, obviously, and they want somebody else to be aware of. Otherwise, they have no concern about this project whatsoever. We notified four different property owners. Of course, we placed legal notices in the newspapers of the county as were required. I did hear, other than from Wendling Quarries, I heard from this landowner right here. And it wasn't a concern about it, the landowner to the east. Mm -hmm. No concern other than the fact he was just basically interested in knowing what it is that, that R.J. Jim Myers wanted to do there. And we explained it. I showed him a copy of how it was going to be broken out, and I've heard nothing since. So um, that's that in a nutshell. So there's obviously no, um, no ground being taken out of production. There isn't any conflict, so to speak, with anybody else that, I'm, that I can be aware of here. I heard from no one else. It is fairly low impact. It's going to be a part-time residence at best. And as I said, there is the, the potential that it may not happen. Uh, but if indeed he decides to go forth, which at right now that is the plan, then obviously he needs your approval. Is there enough room for a septic tank on that acre? Then? If the, the septic system, the way I have it right now, the question came to me is, can we put it here? This is a bit of a waterway here. And so my, my thought is, no, we're not going there. The reason is, is wetness. The other concern that I have in this general area here, and I didn't probe all this at this time, but uh, there very definitely could be limestone here. So it's going to go this way, to the south. And if indeed it does go, and there are issues, it will be an alternative type system. And by that I mean it's likely going to be a container type system. We're not looking at soil absorption in any way, shape, or form. It'll be a media, it will be media inside of a container, which this is being done quite a bit these days. I don't know if you know it or not, but there's different configurations. There's ground up coconut shells, there's styrofoam, all kinds of media that we use to treat wastewater in a container but normally we pump it into it, it has to be dosed and then we have a drain that can come out of it and that can legally discharge that that is treated wastewater coming out of that so it could be that type of a system I'm not saying at this point that it will be because I didn't get that far along with it right now um, this will be a bit of a project to, to determine all of that but one way, shape, or form, it will be a conforming system and it will be done under permit and we'll do the same due diligence that I always try to do with any of them. But there would be room to answer your question. It may not be a real big footprint because these alternative systems do not take a lot of space. So from that standpoint, that's usually a win-win. Getting distance from wells out on existing acreages a lot of times is difficult, so we have to use these smaller systems. That, you know, it might be a four by eight area is all that it takes. And we only have to be 50 feet from a well versus 100 feet because it's containerized. It's not pouring wastewater out of it. So 
where I take the drain though does have to be 100 feet and so that gets a little bit tricky but th this was this will be a probably to the south of that residence. Questions, gentlemen? Yeah, sure. Okay. Is there a motion? So moved, approved. Second. All right. Tracy made the motion. Gary seconded to approve the land use change for R.J. Myers. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, we're right on schedule. Good. Then yep. I'll uh, see you. Well, and the 945 isn't coming, so. Pardon? 945 isn't showing up. Today, They're not? So, no. So, so if you want to report back on that tomorrow after your meeting, you want me to help you? Maybe, or? Well, you want me to find out what I. If what, there's a. If there's anything any that we need. Need, big need in the county. I scanned it yesterday just a little bit, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll look at it a little bit closer. I was telling them it looks like even like an employee quarantine and we could pay the two week wages too. So I think that was an option. Oh, that's Barb, she may have some ideas too. We've been doing so much land use and septic system, I haven't thought about this kind of stuff too much. Well, you've been busy, but the weather's been decent. And, and subdividing. I've never had a year we've done this much subdividing. I was going to say, how many of you? remember when you were keeping track of all of those? I don't, I don't think we've ever had a year that a we've lot. broken ground up like we have this year. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. Seems like every, every day almost, or looking at breaking up ground. It's always surveyors contacting us. It's amazing to me how many houses are been moved or destroyed. This yeah, it is amazing. Bad deal. Back in March, I was concerned that the bottom was going to fall out of everything, and all of a sudden we'd be at a standstill, and this has been one of the busiest years we've had since I've been here. In all, in all of the programs with land use and septic system wise and everything. And we had a 1,500 gallon water tank in a building. Wind took the roof off the building, took the water tank, took it two miles east. Serious? Wow. Actually, over two miles. I went someplace yesterday. I was trying to remember exactly where. There was this bin out in the middle of the field, and I could see no buildings. So it came from probably like what you're talking, a mile or two away. It is out there in the middle. Seems like every time I take a different path, you see something new that, wow, where'd that come from? I hate to guess how many gray bins are gone. Yeah. Is there a big supply issue now with bins? No. You can't get them up. You can get them. You can get them, but you can't get it up. Yeah. yeah. We ordered uh, roofs for bins, I don't know, a couple months ago. They've been down there for a while. They're ready to go. We just gotta go pick them up. It'll take years to get this all done. Well, I'll be back up all day. Okay. See ya. You want these? Mark? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, sorry. No they they took up my litter, did they? <laughs> Do you 
you got your bed scheduled? Eating coma diet. Um, Larry was on the yard yesterday. Larry. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had that in the past. We, <laughs> you well, want to make me see him off by No, no, no. We, <laughs> we did with the sheriff's office. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, but we haven't been doing that, mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's what I said. Garnet made me stay home. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's my busy time. I can do stuff yeah. at home, but, but I get it. Yeah. If my girls are uncomfortable, I would do that. Yeah, so that was just a template if we want to add or take exactly. on. Exactly, exactly. I thought it was well covered topics and mm -hmm. how many people are coming up for this COVID update? I have no idea. I don't even know if Ben's here so I didn't set up a Zoom or anything. I would imagine we'll have most of the department heads. I'd like to think so. Obviously numbers are higher now than they have been. Oh yeah. I'm glad the election's over. Yeah. I think a lot of that's the schools. Pardon me? I, I think a lot of it's the schools have been, there's people that don't have anybody in school or getting sick. It don't make sense. No care facilities, it's, yeah. I had a great aunt fall and she's got a brain bleed. Nobody can go visit her. So I Stevens, I don't know. Go to the funeral. Her husband is in intensive care with it. What a mess. Yeah. Well, let's hope this vaccine is a winner. Yeah, but it's scary to try that too. The way I figure it, you got to have about 80% take it, and then it makes it. There isn't enough people left to get infected, so you don't have any. They don't. So if you guys all take it, I. You won't have to? <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Hey, you're on the health board. You should have to do it. <laughs> Let us know what the side effects are, huh? A couple years ago, I went in to my annual doctor's visit, and he came with a syringe. I said, "What's that for?" He says, "Well, you got to take your um, flu shot." No, <laughs> I don't have to. <laughs> I'll probably die of this COVID thing. I haven't been sick for years. That's good. Hello? Yeah? I think Judy had some other health problems. But mm. Okay. Sad deal. Yeah. I would think so. Because they haven't done that for a while and looked at our inventory and stuff. Yeah, I don't have a problem as long as they still do their screening for them to come in and look. Just, are they on the phone? Just tell them they have to wear their masks and stuff. Okay, thanks. Bye. The first aid kit guys want to come around and check our... Sure. I have other ones too if you want to look at. I ran out to uh, Indianapolis on Saturday. There's some other counties. And it was really tough to find a place to eat. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you buy something at the gas station or something? Well, if you like that kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, but. Well, if you get hungry enough. 
Well, you have to get hungry <laughs> enough eat about anything. <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those that you know. To at the end of the day, we wanted a nice sit down meal, something. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a heck of a time finding any place open. So drive through uh, and carry out is basically what was available. And I can tell you that I had a trailer behind the pickup that would not fit underneath those eight foot uh, low clearance places. It's hard to drive through. So. Well, you can get out and you can just walk through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pouring rain. Oh. So <laughs> it complicated things even more. I don't watch much football, but I did turn on the TV one time and they had crowd noise and everything. There wasn't anybody in the stands. That's <laughs> just to put us to sleep. Cardboard <sighs> cutouts. Yeah. Did you watch the golf masters? They had people following them around still outside. I actually think the Chinese should be held accountable for this to some degree. I don't know exactly to what degree, but if they were... Remember, missing. you're on, on live. Spam. It says spam, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it says spam. Oh, Bad County Board of Supervisors. Hi, salesman. Hello. It's a spam. And I don't think that's the kind of yeet. Good kind of yeet. Can't see my face though. Can't eat or listen to that. Oh boy. What <laughs> See, like my face shield better. I can't cover my face. <laughs> can't see a lot of your expressions. Yeah. I don't know if she's sticking her tongue out. Or <laughs> <you know>. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many deaths there's been worldwide. That's very much, especially in those third world countries where they're. So Myron just emailed said Holly is not planning which I told you that but they talked over the phone and they're going to keep in contact um, you know no work planned until the spring so the petition that was received earlier we did have it in the minutes but we'd have to do more of a formal one I think when we actually go to do the work How's everything working out with the employee? Good. This week, she's pretty much finishing up the FEMA work out there. They have the position advertised. So we'll just share until. But I know the FEMA deadlines are not fun, so I told her to finish out that project. So. Yeah, so I had one Thursday and. Well, I had two deadlines, one last Thursday and one yesterday, so. What was she getting paid out there? About this, I only gave her a little 1500 more because Myron wanted to give her more too. So it isn't going to be an issue as far as where she's working? It was in the minutes. Yep. Sorry, uh, yep. compensation. She's a good worker. She stepped right in. She can do payroll and claims, which is nice because if every two weeks, then we have more flexibility if one of the other girls wants to be gone. And yeah. Yep. Hey, you guys. Hello, young lady. How are you? Hey, Katie. Hey. How are we doing? Hey, Carrie. Hey. I updated them on that 
great for that money. That you need to yeah, uh, I have a board of health meeting in the morning, That's so we're okay. gonna um, kind of go over things. I don't know if I can use that. I don't know with our vaccines if there's yeah. any supplies with those or if we're just getting the vaccine because I thought, well, that would be good money to use for like syringes and clubs yeah, and exactly. all that stuff or I didn't even know I needed a ventilator at the hospital. I don't know how much those would be. Yeah, so I thought we'd, I'd bring it up tomorrow because we only have until December. December 30th, yeah. yeah they don't like, give us much time. Anytime, yeah. So I thought I'd bring it up and kind of brainstorm through some ideas on how we yeah. can best use it. So that's exciting. But, yeah. You maybe forward some of those examples to us. Um, yeah, I can scan them. I just downloaded them off the well, of these, they them. Oh, the these, yeah, I did, but like the they'll account, be counted. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully not many more. <laughs> it's ongoing in all the counties that everybody's sharing <laughs> stuff right now. Where my yeah. dad was some of them have in place, some of them are just now getting yes. another one in place. Uh, some of the old ones were due we're to expire in December. Yeah, which just a little room. But we're already going to be in December, so. Yeah. Maybe every other season. Gary, you have to move. We can't be six feet apart now. There you go. Oh, Gary's got his mask. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> hey, Take a picture here. of this, will you? <laughs> So it's a clear one. I can't yes, have a poker face as easy as this. <laughs> yeah. So there was a problem. I forget I have it on once for all. Yes, it does. Oops, that doesn't work. Can't take a drink. Yeah. This yeah. is just a suggestion. Thank you. Look at you. I told me that was water. But I came in anyway. Okay. So I, you just need to look at that and see if I am in with the CDC guidelines. Mm -hmm. I may have abbreviated okay. them somewhat. You guys probably already have this, but. Am I within the guidelines there? Awesome. Let's read your. <laughs> okay. I think I'm within the guidelines. daily for well in those days we had over 100 to 200 people and we use it daily in the office and so far all of us have been good because mm -hmm. i know we were in contact with people especially in their cars they would tell us and we were we had to help them vote oh yeah but we just in two weeks you guys have... yep so i i mean i know we were in contact with people we just said, here, you keep the pen, and then we bring the clipboards in and wipe them down. And Somebody had a deal on for sale. It would go like on the outside door where they walk through a small tented area and it. Like the infrared or? Disinfects them, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to sell all kinds somebody of stuff. New coat. <laughs> Why is my leather coat now pink? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you look gullible. <laughs> not, not buying that machine. Well, it is 10 o'clock. We're here to discuss COVID updates, COVID 19 updates. I know there was COVID 18, so yeah. Well, that's why you got to 19. <laughs> Country you were in. So, 
Katie, would you please take the lead on this? Absolutely. So, um, first, our numbers are increasing. I was looking back from the sixth when I was here last, and to kind of compare numbers, last semester we were at 368. Today, um, we are over, you know, 1,380 positive cases in the county. Um, we've got two long-term care outbreaks. And um, for that 14-day average, we're at 25.6%. Um, so our numbers are just huge. You know, we're, we're really getting a lot of cases. Um, last night, um, the governor spoke. I don't know if any of you got to see that. Um, but she put out um, some additions to the proclamation, um, which are very important. Um, so I've given you guys a copy of that as far as, um, you know, the mask use um, and the required mask. have a mask on pursuant to the governor's order. Sorry to interrupt, as do you. Do you mask or shield? Governor? What's that? Mask or shield? Well, she said mask, but yes. I don't care. We've got to have one on. Okay. I don't have a mask. I have shield because that's what's been allowed over the courthouse. Okie dokie. So, of course, the mask use is um, part of the proclamation from the governor and um, requiring folks to be six feet from one another. Um, and we have gathering restri restrictions. Um, she had um, also put out for our bars and restaurants to close at 10 and um, some guidelines on that as well. Um, closing of fitness centers. Um, and then also um, some guidelines for hospitals as far as um, non-essential surgeries. Um, the concern is, you know, is overwhelming our healthcare system as well. You know, we want to be able to take care of folks. So when we have people that are out at staff-wise um, due to COVID, and um, you know, we want to make sure that we can perform those services to take care of our community. So um, those are really really big things and I think we need to continue to encourage folks and businesses and people to to be masking and following these guidelines um, we each have such a huge impact on this result or the way things are you know it's up to every one of us individually to take that responsibility of protecting ourselves and others with COVID um, so I think that's the strongest message that I want to you know express here um, when we look at our region, you know, right now we have 1,510 folks with COVID hospitalized in Region 6. Um, we have 288 of those folks are in the ICU. Yesterday we had 271. Um, we have, um, we've had uh, 215 admissions in the last 24 hours. Um, we do have beds available. Again, we look at our beds, but we also look at the staffing in order to take care of those folks in the beds. Um, 852 vents available, and we have 130 people on vents currently. So as we continue, you know, I'm really grateful that the governors put some more of these measures into place. And, um, you know, we just, it's so important that we, we mask and really be diligent in this practice in order to um, slow the spread. So that's where we're sitting at now. I know um, Bell Plain and Benton Community Schools have um, switched over to online learning. Um, I know um, Benton Community has extended that out. Um, you know, we work with the schools as far as looking at um, COVID positivities, by zip code and that type of thing. And so, um, of course, we're, con we're really encouraging just um, folks to practice the quarantining, the hand washing, the social distancing, and masking so that we can get a better grip on this. What kind of cool. questions do you guys have? How many people passed away? Um, I think we have recorded right now that's 11, 11 deaths 11. currently. Yeah. I heard six last week. And, you know, and right now we are actually in the process. We are, we began using a system called IDES 
for our public health, for our cases, it's a system that we have been using for quite some time. We're switching over to a DOMO system. And so um, another way for us to chart and track things. So I think all of our numbers will kind of, once we get switched over, which is to tomorrow is our last day to kind of get all that information over, I think we'll have update, better updated numbers. But I know those things continue to rise. Okay. Other input? No? What do we need to do in addition to what we've been doing? So I think um, some of the most important things I think um, for our community to look at is really any time that we're unable to social distance or we're in any public places, I really think we need to be for sure masking, you know, that is a known way, you know, this is a respiratory illness. And so um, by wearing the mask and practicing that distancing, you know, any sort of barrier you can put between you and COVID, you know, you wanna have in place. You know, it's scary because some folks don't even know that they have COVID or have really mild symptoms. So by them wearing a mask and by you wearing a mask, you know, they're protecting themselves and you from you know getting that from them so you know they're just really basic measures we can take and I don't know why we've gotten away from this idea that I don't know if it's politics or how I don't know if it's the internet or social media but so many people the misconception about masks I don't quite understand you know it's just a basic way we can protect ourselves and others. You know, it's so important. So I think we just need to encourage that, you know, everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we were to review this on the 17th. Today is our timeline, if you will. And I had asked our county attorney to come up with a policy that he's been working on and I'm sure you know said before we're not reinventing the wheel we've already got other counties that have policies in place and you know anything that we come up with probably isn't going to be perfect and it may need to get tweaked have, have you gotten recommendations up yet David or are still working on well, you folks have to look at them. Of course. So, I'm going to ask if Ron Tippett would help me. <laughs> be, a, be a first time for that. Huh? Yep. Could you pass out one of those to everyone in the room? I had talked to Katie uh, yep. earlier this week and, yep. and asked for essentially what is Virginia Gay doing for their policy? Mm-hmm. So, Ron is handing out the Virginia Gay policy. Uh, um, you've seen some of it before, and I think either the second colored insert or attachment or the last page is their kind of checklist, and then they have an employee screening worksheet. And then Ron, can you do me this favor? Because yep. I'm doing so good. You pass one of those out. And then Ron is passing out what I believe is the current uh, Iowa Department of Public Health recommendation. And I think the biggest difference between the two is it looks like you know, whether you're going to have an isolation or quarantine for 10 days versus 14 days. I think Virginia Gay has gone to 10 days with certain conditions being met. Um, Iowa Department of Public Health, I think, if, if I got there from September 29th, I think that's their latest rendition. Um, there says 14 days. Um, I think that the uh, Virginia Gay wanted to be retreated a little bit because we obviously don't have you know, not treating patients. Right. Hopefully our folks are at a lower risk than a, than a care provider. Um, but the charts on both in, that are colored, we put them in color to keep you interested, uh, I think give a pretty good summary. And it's in particular, under the Virginia A packet, um, it's either the, it's, like I said, it's either the second or the last one. What we're a staple there. But it's this kind of checklist or flow sheet here. 
So if you have a positive test, you're off for 10 days. And then uh, within the packet, Virginia Gay further says, correct me if I'm wrong, Katie, you don't come back, though, necessarily after 10 days. You come back if you've been fever-free for 72 hours without taking any fever reducers. So you're going to be off a minimum of 10 days, but you would come back on day 11 if you hadn't been fever-free for three days without taking acetaminophen or aspirin or something to reduce yeah, your fever. Symptoms reduced and no fever. And I don't know why the difference, other than I'm guessing Virginia Gay is smarter because they're local. I don't know what, what the difference between the 10 and the 14 is. I know that some state employees are adhering to the 14 days. We recently had one of our judges that I don't think she tested positive, but she was home quarantining for 14 days, still doing work. So for, with our IDPH guidelines, as far as somebody testing positive, we go from their onset of symptoms to um, to those 10 days. And so before we would clear somebody, um, we want them to be fever free. We want their symptoms to be improved and it at least be 10 days since they tested positive. Now if somebody um, doesn't test positive or exposed, we use that 14 days because um, usually people don't develop symptoms until about, you know, that first weekend. And so we kind of use that two week time frame. Um, to make sure that they don't develop symptoms, you know, for those folks that we have in quarantine, so that we're monitoring. Are some of the other small differences like that possibly um, because of the critical infrastructure workers? Yeah, and with your critical infrastructure workers, so when we have those measures in place like masking and the distancing, um, you know, and there's, I believe, 17 categories or something for um, what's considered critical infrastructure workers. So the big difference with that is if somebody is exposed, um, that they can still come to work as long as they don't have any symptoms. We just would want them to mask, monitor, make sure if they developed any symptoms, we send them home right away. Sorry to interrupt. You're yeah. saying that's if they're considered a critical employee? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here, if you could use your uh, uh, forecasting abilities, as you look at the county, we'll just start with the courthouse. Yeah. Who's critical in this building? Um, there is a list. So, like government I've, employees, did you see that list? Yes. So, you know, for instance, is, we'll just pick one, one out of half custodians. Um, custodians can be critical, but absolutely, they can also, you know, case in point, you might want to, if you have somebody that's around, like a, a someone they're living with, family member that's positive, even though they're a critical employee, you still probably want to consider, if you can schedule them, having them be quarantined at home. Um, yeah. Even if they're asymptomatic at this point, in my opinion, because uh, you know it takes a number of days for, for folks to start you know, developing symptoms right. or exhibiting symptoms, and at the same time, they can be asymptomatic and still be passing this thing on to the next person. So yeah, we really look at that like in our long-term care centers and that sort of thing. You know, we, we look at is is it critical? Are we at a critical point or can we go ahead and let them quarantine, you know, and monitor? You know, if we were in a really bad shape, you know, of course we can bring somebody in as long as they don't have symptoms and we know that those measures are being taken. So for instance, if you have, let's say, an elected official, you know, an elected official, that if they're you know, obviously, if they're positive, they're going to go home for either 10 or 14 days, depending on which uh, one you want to pick. And then knowing that whatever that day, that time period for being quarantined away from the building, um, I do think we need to adopt the standard that they've got to be fever free for three days, and that's without taking any sort of uh, over the counter fever reducers. Yeah. Okay. Then they can come back to work. Um, a lot of folks can work from home or give direction and they have deputies in the case of an elected official. Um, a custodian, if they're around someone who has been positive, to pick on custodians again, um, my recommendation would be have them come in but adjust the hours if, if they, if, so that they're in, working, and other folks aren't here. Um, there's nothing that says this building can't be cleaned at 8 o'clock at night. Um, 
and this is just for a short duration, mind you. Okay. Um, I did not try to include any sort of policy for the sheriff's department. I'm hoping that the sheriff has, if you know, heaven forbid, he starts uh, getting deputies that are, are testing positive. I'm hoping he's got enough reserves built up through the years that he's got people he can call in. Also, I don't know what Myron would do if Myron has people uh, that we're getting into fairly soon will be in the snowplow weather. Um, hopefully he has people, including retired people, that he can call on to come back and, and have them serve as part-time employees if this gets as bad as it could. I would think that Myron would be, um, not to pick on Myron, but his employees are relatively isolated, especially his greater operators and such. I mean, they go into their shop, they get in their grader, they grade all day, and they go home. They don't really see anybody. They talk to somebody on the radio. Well, I think that's, you know, the concern is what if they break down? What if they've got to take it to the shop? Mm -hmm. You know, what are they doing when they get fuel? You know, that type of thing is, is where they would have other contact. So well, the fuel part of it, they have fuel at each location. That's very true, but if a uh, if an operator, you know, isn't feeling well, uh, I understand. You know, I've got a headache today, or I've got a cold coming on. You know, does he go to work? You My know? question would be, um, how many folks do they have that are maintainer operators? Thirteen. Yeah, there's 13. Thirteen? Thirteen. Okay. Well, so, half, really. So at, at, at what point would they not have enough? One person gets sick, I'm guessing 12 can do the job, right? Um, at what point, though, if, if they had a number that were ill and were off work quarantined, at what point would they be too shorthanded to get the job done? Yeah, I don't I don't. So know I would encourage the engineer. I'm guessing he has folks that are out there that still have the right licensing that you know, you could possibly set up as part-time employees to come back if they would. They don't have to agree to that, mind you, but, uh, you well, know, I think that he should be developing steps like that uh, or a plan like that in case, you know, worst case scenario, what happens if all of a sudden half my, my workforce is, is depleted due to being quarantined to this. Yeah, and I think that's really important is taking those departments or those areas so they can really kind of think through that process or, you know, come up with that plan because everybody's going to be a little bit different as far as pe people who can work from home or these types of things. And so it's really important to have those folks. The other thing that. is um, we need to really, uh, we need to ask for everyone to be heavily invested in this. I'm not going to name names, but, you know, I've seen people walking around that work in a building, you know, not wearing a mask. Um, you know, maybe it's just something that they forgot. I don't know, but everyone needs to really be on board with this. Um, and then, you know, for instance, what we do upstairs, we had a, 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 a meeting in the jury room. Um, we have the spray cleaners and stuff. We sterilize the table and spray down the chairs with Lysol when we're done. You know, it stinks. Um, we really need to make sure we're following the, the hygiene, washing our hands, cleaning areas, you know. Uh, case in point, we had a, a sentencing in a case uh, two weeks ago, and there were a number of witnesses that, you know, uh, gave presentations, victim impact statements, actually, at the sentencing, and when each one came up and took the witness chair, when they were done, we paused and the judge came down and sanitized the seat and the little you know, table platform where the person was sitting. Uh, that's what the court system's doing. Uh, and we need to be encouraging people to do more of that. As much, you know, as much sanitation and good hygiene practices as we can encourage, and we really need to ask everyone to be invested in this. And then according, I talked this for a walk in, according to uh, Governor Reynolds' proclamation from last night, if we're in a public setting and uh, we can't do the six foot uh, social distancing, you gotta wear a mask. Um, you know, so board meeting, Everyone needs to be masked up like they are right now. Yeah. Walk through the hallway, need to have a mask on. Go to the bathroom, restroom, need to have a mask on. 
Can I go back and ask a question, Katie and Dave, both, as far as the critical worker, where you, these people can't stay at home, but if they have a significant other, for example, that it is positive, they're here, they're showing no symptoms, but if they are here, they have to be PPE, right? They have to. No, no questions asked. How do we enforce that? What do we do if they're not? I wouldn't allow them to work. Yeah, well, you know, if you have someone that won't follow the rules, you know, it's a disciplinary matter. Uh, I don't think we have anyone in this building that wouldn't play ball and be on the same page with this. At least I'd like to think that's the case. Okay. Um, but that is our policy, though. They have to be masked up, basically. Yeah, and the other thing is, is Mark, I would again say, you know, if a person truly can't work from home, um, do, do we consider adjusting the hours a little bit? Um, you know, is, is it a person that has to help see people or have appointments, for instance? Um, you know, nothing's, you know, certain things can be done at a different shift. We're not talking for the rest of time. Um, in fact, that's one of the recommendations. I think it might be in the, uh, I don't remember if it's in the Iowa Department of Public Health recommendation or something else I read. They encouraged employees to, you know, basically utilize flexible thinking. Who can work from home? Can you stagger shifts so that folks aren't around each other as often? You know, if you got five employees that work in an area, do all five have to come in at the same time? Or can, you know, a couple of them come in two hours earlier, leave two hours earlier because of that? Yeah. In your opinion, why is this um, getting worse instead of getting? I feel like people have really gotten laxed. You know, when we started, we kind of automatically went into that shutdown mode. Then we had summer, you know. I think there's quite a few things that have to do with it. You know, it's getting colder. You have people gathering inside. You have people that aren't masking, you know, or not taking those measures, you know, or not taking it seriously um, and gathering, you know, that's that's where we always see our biggest spikes and after any kind of mass gathering of any kind, you know, we always see those numbers go up. And so, you know, with the winter season coming on, you know, or the holidays and people gathering, you know, it's just with this being a respiratory illness and so easily spread, you know, that's that's where we're seeing those spikes. You know, well, one thing so if I, I could chime in, I, I, I'm, I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, um, but I think it's also, you know, that our employees need to be really, really encouraged to go get their flu shots because, you know, I don't think there's any, any real data yet, but I'm guessing you really don't want to go through a double whammy of having the flu yeah. and then you have COVID at the same time. I'm guessing that's, if one, if either one is bad, I'm guessing the two together are worse. Um, and flu shots don't cost a county employee um, uh, that has the health insurance, doesn't cost them anything. Yep. And most flu shots, if you don't have insurance, are still pretty. 30 bucks. 25 bucks, yeah, whatever. Yeah, not very much. And you so can get really those at McGranges or anywhere, yep. you can walk in and get them. You can go to a high V or, you know, yep. whatever. Can, can you? Talk about just a moment uh, the test on the way out if you believe you have it but coming back. Yep, so of course we encourage testing. Now, um, we, when we look at releasing somebody, you know, we really do symptom based um, on how they're feeling and we look at that time frame of the 10 days or the 14 days for those folks that were just exposed. So, when you have a positive test, you can, we've had people wanting people to have a negative test to come back to work, but that virus can show up for weeks and weeks after they've already had it. And so that's why we really you know, focus on symptoms and how a person is feeling, because they can register positive for quite some time. Um, with people that have had COVID, um, now, if they're re-exposed or get sick, um, within that 90-day time frame or that three months, if they aren't showing symptoms, you know, then we 
or if they're exposed, we want to quarantine them because for that 90 days, we show we can see that in their blood work that that um, that's still showing up. So we feel like they're kind of in a safe zone for that three months. Now, if they were symptomatic, then we'd go ahead and we'd kind of treat them with COVID, like they had COVID or we'd want them to quarantine. But, um, but as far as that testing to come back, um, we, don't, we don't advise that. So if I'm hearing you right, um, if you had a person that tested positive, yep. and a county employee test positive, your current health recommendations um, for Virginia Gay and for Benton County uh, Public Health would be, you'd be okay with, they go through the 10 day period, if at the end of the 10 days they are symptom free yep. and they have no fever for three days, at least three days, and again they're not taking anything over the counter to lower their fever, then that person would be okay to come back or safe to come back even though they're more than likely still, if you gave them another COVID test, they're still going to have test antibodies positive. and test yes. positive. Test positive. So that's what you guys are doing right now. Yep, and for um, and some folks have kept that 72 hours in um, for IDPH for our tracking measures. We do 24 hours fever free. But what there's would just you recommend to us because I've also Ron had a, a, a policy that didn't look too bad either. And, and I don't know, did it say 48 hours? I mean, he didn't. Know that. I think I put, I think that one went with the 48 hours. And that would be for the, the critical, it doesn't say that. The critical. But that would well, be what, what critical would, only. But that was 72 hours. So wouldn't the public health recommendation be for a policy along those lines? So we use 24 hours fever free. Symptoms but, resolved in at least 10 days. And that was somebody with a, 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 a positive COVID test? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then I saw in your policy though, if they're critical, that's where you, the 72 came in. Yep, and we can we extend that time frame. If somebody um, has a chronic health condition, um, then we'll we we'll keep them out even longer to 20 days, you know, depending on you know that individual and their yeah. health history so too. You you've been so getting varies. you've been getting invited, and thank you, Katie, for being a good sport. Yeah, um, it's about to get worse. <laughs> um, you've been to the court courthouse now several times. Yeah. I mean, how many folks? do you feel would, that work here would, would merit that they're symptom free, they've been quarantined for 10 days, this is after they definitely had COVID or at least two of the symptoms. Um, if they've had two symptoms without a test, we're still treating them as if they have COVID. Um, and there are certain symptoms, if they have a fever of 100.4 over, we're treating them like it's COVID, even if they've gotten tested or not, they're off for 10 days. Um, but uh, the folks that are working, we'll start with just the courthouse. How many would you feel comfortable with? They've gone through that 10 days, they've been fever free for 24 hours without taking anything to reduce it. Yep. Do you think that they'd be safe to come back or should we go with a, a longer period like 48 hours or 72 hours? Yeah, that's that. I would feel comfortable with 24 hours, but that's something, you know, as an organization or as you look at things. What about a sheriff's deputy or a dispatcher? Yeah. Or, you think they're, I mean, can you think of any county, because we're not providing health care right. to people like you folks are up at the hospital and the yeah. clinic. Do you, can you think of any county employee that would require a longer window than, again, if, if they've got either certain symptoms like over 100.4 or a positive COVID test, or they've got any two of the following um, after they've done 10 days, are you thinking that 24 hours, fever free again with nothing taken to reduce the fever, they'd be okay to report back to work? Yes, and that's what we do in our contact tracing for the state. Um, so, you know, as you look at your different kinds of businesses or different populations that people work with, you know, um, as long as they're doing these measures, and you know, we've changed guidelines and recommendations several times, and this, you know, the 24 hours is what we're going on from now. But, you know, when you look at a care center or different places, they may have... They want to have more... They're places. also, they're also providing, they're providing treatment and services where they're... To you others, know, yeah. They're definitely within six feet. And yeah, absolutely. I've got a question, if I may. Melinda? Yeah. 
you have been instructed by the state of Iowa to allow outside county residents to come into the licensing department, correct? Yes. How is that working? Pretty good. They, they make their appointments, mm -hmm. obviously. A few try to just show up, but they end up calling and making appointments. Because yeah. a lot of times we've been booked up, so. Sure, sure. Um, we haven't had a ton, but we've done, we've done some. Are we've there done. any other departments that are taken out of county? Um, you're taking out of county as well. That's working out okay. Mm -hmm. But are you doing that by appointment or are they walk ins? That's appointment. That's appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How is it with, uh, as far as coming through the door, Sheriff, maybe you can answer this. Someone shows up with a spouse. Someone shows up with children in tow. How is that working? What goes on? We're allowing them through the health screen and the security screen. We're allowing them to conduct their business. If so, they have small children, if they're two or over, we tell them they have to wear a mask. Okay. Some parents have been upset because their kid doesn't like the mask, but we're like, if you have to bring them in, they have to have it on. We may or may not be getting some clarification from our chief judge. Our chief judge signed an order for the Lynn County Courthouse yesterday. Now, Lynn County Courthouse is, of course, different than our courthouse in that. Basically, I believe every single office in that building is court-related or county attorney staff. Mm -hmm. And he put a limit on the number of people who can come in for different things. Um, I honestly, honestly, honestly don't think, no, sorry, I'm just going to say it, I don't think a family of four should be coming in right now. We haven't had that. No, but I'm just saying I think that that should be discouraged and, and you know, we're trying to limit the spread of this thing and, uh, you know, you don't need to bring your three kids to get your driver's license. So if I could touch on the courthouse. Is everybody okay with the way things are currently being handled at the door as far as Lex is open for walk-ins, your appointment only? Uh, basically, we have very few that want to go to the assessor, very few that want to go to the uh, county attorney, and a few that want to go to the clerk of the court. Uh, the trials have been continued until jury trials are, will not be recommencing before February 1st. Um, one other thing I'm going to chime in super quick. Uh, we are in our office encouraging folks that want to come in and meet with us. We're only doing that if we absolutely need to and have to. If it can be done over the phone, that's how we're doing it. And so we've actually, the people that would normally come in, we've cut that. I would guess we'd probably cut that to less than 25% of who we used to, you know, have come in. And we could, you know, maybe it's not quite as personal, whatever. We're still, you know, it's something that we truly need to meet in person, we'll do it. But, you know, I think that we all need to be trying to think of ways to limit, you know, personal interactions within, within all the county buildings. Right now we have a lot of officials coming in to take their oaths and sign in, so the townships and stuff have to do that. But. Uh, we've been very good with juvenile court. I'd say 99% of that's been handled over the phone, not in person in the courthouse. Our biggest uptick has been in magistrate court for uh, continuing with uh, non-jury trials in magistrate court. I suspect we're going to see that go back down. Okay. And then an occasional something in district court where it's a non-jury and somebody requires an appearance, but most of that's been handled to the attorneys over the phones, too. Yeah. Uh, so I personally, if everybody's okay with it, I don't see any reason to change anything we're doing here. Well, it's think, working. I think there is some confusion, you know, and, and I'm going to use, you know, the county attorney's example of a gal coming in, uh, or, a, or, or a person coming in, and they've got, you know, three kids in, in tow, 
you know, to go renew a driver's license, you know, and whether they're over the age of two or not, you know, that, you know, what is okay and what isn't? A person with two children versus four children, you know, not? I mean, there, there needs to be some... Well, some of those people don't have a daycare clarity. and they can't leave them out in the car. Exactly, so. exactly. So I would just really yeah. encourage folks to, you know, be mindful or to limit who comes. Just like when we, if we um, encourage folks people going to the grocery store. You know, don't try not to take your whole family. I know some people don't have those resources, but I think encouraging that and encouraging people to limit the amount of visitors. Well, we have two department heads here. One takes appointments, mm -hmm. one does not. Yeah. Okay, so the one that does not, take money here, Alexa, uh, they come in to do whatever in the recorder's office, but she's got three kids with her, that's totally unannounced, not scheduled. However, an appointment, and she comes in with he or she with three kids, I mean, right. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough call for security. We, we have had a couple incidences where somebody would come in and say, I need to uh, register something. Do you have an appointment? Well, no. Turns out they needed to register a boat or a snowmobile. Mm -hmm. well, our question should have been, who would you like to see? If you need to go to the corner, you can go back and do your registration. If you need to go to the treasurer's office, we need that appointment because they schedule them pretty tight. One thing I would like to see. And that, that would be just, just the difference in the questions, all that is. Right. One thing I would like to see is, is once the person comes in the building, uh, or, you know, I don't think we should do any more of this if, if you, uh, you know, if you feel comfortable, take your mask off. Uh, oh, they need to be masked. I think everyone yeah. just needs to be masked now. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, I understand for election purposes, you know, we can't force someone to wear a mask, but the election's over. Uh, yeah. Thank God. We got someone coming in, <laughs> and, and if we were letting in, they got, you know, a couple kids with them, mask, there's some hand sanitizer, feel free to use all kinds of it, we've got more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we are under the mandate from the governor, which is constitutional that can be enforced. Where if it was the city that said, well, we're going to require everybody in Vinton to wear a mask, that's not constitutional. You can't enforce that. Right. And one other thing I would add in, so I brought it up for, actually brought it up for a reason. So the chief judge is in order for the Lynn County Courthouse. I wouldn't, you know, I don't know if he's going to do one for the Benton County Courthouse, but I wouldn't be surprised if he did a similar order as it relates to the court functions in the courthouse. And the judge's order ends with uh, if anybody, you know, fails the health screen or isn't following the rules, the security officers are within their rights to say you're not coming in. So I mean, I think the public, for the most part, has been pretty good on this. But we've had a couple occasional person here or there that wants to kind of argue about stuff. Um, the way I, you know, the way I've interpreted uh, the judge's order again, it's just for Lynn County at the moment. But I think this part should be applicable to our security officers. I don't think our security officers should let anyone in if they're not confident they're going to follow the rules. You know, you know. And again, I don't know of anybody that said, "Man, I love me some of these COVID restrictions. I really enjoy them so much." I get that, that folks, you know, it's not a fun time for anyone. But you know, we don't need to have folks that are going to come in and create issues either. I have sure. just a couple things to go back on the family thing. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't happen very often, but once in a while we'll need to do, you know, a family will need to do passports or want to do passports. So, I mean, they could, we potentially could have four people at once. How, I mean, do we yeah. say bring two kids in or one kid in at a time and then you come back and bring the other kid? I mean, that's... That's the hard part. And then secondly, the situation I think that you're referring to was a gal that came in and she needed a birth certificate. And she had called us ahead of time and we said, just come to the door. Well, we didn't know that she had two children, a baby in a car seat and a little small two-year-old. So when she gets here to do her birth certificate, you know, 
she, you know, what what she's supposed to do with her kids. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that's right. a hard thing to say to you there. Right. Right. You know, because I don't ask every single person, hey, do you have kids? Don't bring them. You know, mm -hmm. it's, well, you know. They very rarely tell you when they call them. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't know how this all works exactly, and I'm, I don't want to throw cold water on anything, but if they're together all the time anyway, I mean, the chances of them, one of them having it, and the rest of them not getting it, is I don't probably think, pretty I don't think that's the, the, the issue concern. Real quick. Sure, they're a family. They're all together all the time. Great, that's great. Okay, so what you expect. But the issue is now they're around you and you've got it because you caught it from them mm -hmm. and now you've given it to semen, now you've given it to primer, and now we're out of business or another department. Okay, but that's the issue. That's all I will avoid. Is right, this. but whether, so just, whether one person that has it comes in or whether the mother and, and two children come in, chances are you're going to get it regardless or not going to get it regardless because they're all together they they they're one unit if someone in that family has it mm -hmm. covid it's it first of all they shouldn't be coming in right and they, they may should not be know. And, and if they are goofy enough to come forth and say no to the questions asked and or they pass the temperature thing, but yeah, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Gary. But you know, hopefully people are wise enough that if they feel any symptoms, they stay home. Ron, how many people have come to the door that you hit the temperature on and they were a hundred point four or greater? I, I've never had one. As Mark, do you know uh, how to help anybody? Not, not that I know of recently, I think in the summertime, summer because yeah, it was hot. I was going to say, and then they hot. like to yeah. yeah. But other than that, I don't remember. I, I, I don't think we've had anybody because mm -hmm. the temperature we've got to say. I think one had a family member that tested positive and he made him leave. Because he told them right when he got here. Mm -hmm. you know. Where do you see this um, in December, January, and February? Do you see this continuing? I, um, I definitely see our numbers continue to climb, especially if we don't take these precautions. Um, you know, we have a vaccine on the horizon. Hopefully here, you know, in 21, we'll be getting more information on that. But, you know, and I think just like the governor, you know, we're in hopes to think that, you know, if we can get this controlled or get people masking and distancing and taking these precautions that that will I'll bring your number back down. Well, as I look back on it, it was springtime, and it was just coming into the area. There weren't, weren't very many positive cases, right. so it could it could be worse this this winter than last winter because um, it's winter time now. And yeah, and we really didn't have. Get it until after, yeah. So it will be interesting. Also, you got the closed spaces yeah. and the winter weather and the cold, not that late in the way we would in the spring or summer. Right. So I, you know, I hope that it doesn't happen. But I think we're about to get swamped. Yeah. By the way, uh, Katie, I meant yeah. to ask you. So when you were saying that, you know, that the folks that right now. You said uh, are currently within our jurisdiction uh, or region, 130 are on ventilators. How many ventilators do we have total? Um, we have, so yeah. Uh, I'm just curious. There might be some of the ventilators get free up. We have 852 available. We have 130 on vents right now. So I could make a recommendation or a suggestion. I would recommend that we keep the current courthouse policies the same with the exception that everyone coming in, visiting the courthouse, they need to wear a mask uh, unless there's a specific reason to take the mask off. 
like you got to take a mask off for your passport photo. Or if the district court judge says, you know, take your mask off for testifying, wear a shield instead. Um, and then what I would do is, and I'd have it for you next week, we will do a quarantine policy based off of what Virginia Gay and Public Health is telling us with this checklist being kind of the gospel and the person will have to, that if they're in a situation where if they had to quarantine for 10 days, coming <clears throat> off quarantine, they better be at least for 24 hours fever free. Yep. And again, with the proviso that they're not taking anything over the counter to, you know, a fever reducer. Is everyone comfortable with that? Can I add something? Like, are we going to discuss their pay for this quarantine time? Because compensation. compensation. How about we do, we do this part first? So is everyone comfortable with a policy that says that? Yeah, I am. And I will write you up something that says that next Tuesday. And in the meantime, um, hopefully no one tests positive. Well, I'd like to, today is the last day. I mean, we were through December, excuse me, November 17th. And so we need to extend our yep, time period well, as well. Yep, and, and I think everything, and if I could, uh, again, I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Um, these discussions are providing a certain level of stress and apprehension to a number of the county employees. I would recommend that you keep your policy and you know, right now, why don't you make the policy effective through February 1st? That's what I was thinking because this, this every system. two, three weeks is just getting everyone in a turmoil. It also keeps the public on edge. You know, are you going to open up in two weeks? You know, and this would. This follows the judicial guidelines as well. I don't have a problem with that. You okay. I just want to. I just want to ask about something. This is the well because I don't know what to do with my office. Um, some treasurer's offices have had to close because they had positive COVID cases in their offices. We've been lucky. Hopefully, it stays that way. <laughs> um, what they've done though is if they've had one person test positive for COVID. They closed the complete office, and then um, everybody went and got tested. The ones that came back negative that were not showing symptoms, they came back to work to process the mail, do, like we were shut down before. Do that stuff, is that still gonna be okay if they're not showing, and they wear masks the whole time they're at their desk. Yeah, I think that under the, Virginia, correct me if I'm wrong, under the Virginia Gate policy, as long as you, and assuming you've had one employee, you know, positive or, fever over 100.4, they don't have a test result, you have to treat them like it's positive, or they have two of the serious symptoms at the same time, you got to treat that as positive. So if you have any employee that falls in that situation, I think what we've been, you know, the current recommendation is that as long as the other employees are symptom free and wearing PPE, yeah. they can continue to work and hopefully Good. they didn't pick it up. Um, but we also need to really, again, within each office, you need to take and clean your stations where people are going to assume you guys are doing yeah, that. Yeah. Court system's doing that. We're doing that with meetings up in the jury room. We need, honestly, we get done with folks sitting in here, we need to be wiping these chairs down. You know, we need to be making sure the bathrooms are getting cleaned every couple of hours. Because that would help, because if my office was shut down for two weeks, I don't know, the mail would backlog would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. we'll get paid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I have to process the money. Yeah, we're going to do payroll. <laughs> it's not, you know, if we keep following the steps that we followed so far, but also I think we need to kind of, because I think folks have gotten maybe tired or fatigued or complacent, we need to step up our game a little bit. You know, hopefully, with those measures, we're going to be fine and we're not going to have to shut the building down. But if you have to shut a department down or the building down, it can be in a world of hurt pretty quick. What is the protocol on that? Let's say we have three people test positive in the courthouse. Does the whole courthouse get shut down? It's like we're going to follow the, uh, what we look at. You know, we, as long as we're practicing that social distancing, and um, masking, you know, those close contacts are identified as folks that are closer within six feet for greater than 15 minutes. So as you practice or look at things, how you can implement them, if you can keep people separated and masked and where they're not in close contact, 
and run things that way, then that decreases that risk. So instead of having to close down everywhere, you know, you just look at those immediate contacts. The other thing is, uh, I'm going to say it again, this is a terrible room to meet in, okay? It doesn't ventilate well. We don't have big tall ceilings. We've got, you know, we have, we have over 10 in here right now, don't we? Ten Nine. Exactly, maybe? Mm -hmm. um, we really should consider moving the Board of Supervisor meetings to either like, the conference room at the Sheriff's Office or um, up to the third floor district courtroom. For meetings of this nature, yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, because you can't. So you guys aren't social distance, really. You know, it, it, it's not. A, it's an okay room for non-COVID times, but for uh, the time we're in right now, this room isn't very adequate at all. Yes. Katie, can you touch on? I put in here at one point where you said the uh, when somebody goes to get tested, I don't want them to have the rapid test with those results so you, you want that PCR test I want the, yeah yeah and what we're finding with, the, um, with some of the rapid tests you know we're seeing some false negatives you know it's not quite as accurate as the nasopharyngeal swab or the swab that we send to the state hygienic lab and so that's um, completely reasonable um, you know it's nice for a quick answer um, you know, those that come back positive, we're not seeing a lot of false positives, but some of those false negatives we are seeing, you know, and with COVID, you know, if you test right away after an exposure, you know, we usually like people to wait at least 48 hours before getting tested so that, that it gives it time to actually show up. And so having a negative, um, maybe rapid screen, you know, it's not absolutely accurate, so. Or the other test is much more likely. Yeah, it's more accurate than PCR. Because I'm fairly sure we talked about that. Yeah. Which test do they do at the test Iowa sites? Um, they're they're doing the send out. The rapid is okay. the one that you know right away. It's oh, okay. A smaller okay. nasal swab. The other one is further back and more accurate. More uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, more uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. That's what I want. Yes. Mm -hmm. The minor for war test. <laughs> Make your eyes water. Yep. I know it works. Yep. You're awake now. <laughs> so what we need to do is, is we need a motion, if we will, or more discussion as far as the timeline. It's been recommended February 1st to stay in the same uh, line as the judicial system. We have a 2021 calendar, February 1st, May not. Might be on. I, I forgot my phone. I didn't bring. I'm my guessing phone. February 1st is a Monday. So it is a Monday. It is. So we can go to the second for our purposes. And that any customers, for lack of uh, a non employee personnel, is to be masked at all times yeah, while the county is, facilities. Unless there's a specific reason not to. The Such as they, a photo. Yeah, or, the reason is that they don't believe they should have to wear a mask. It's, they're getting a passport photo or the judge says you may take your mask off and testify, that right. type of thing. Right, you know. driver's license photo. Yeah. Driver's license photo. Exactly. So that's a recommendation. February 2nd is a Tuesday, correct? Okay. So, so we'll move. Yeah. Questions, Tracy? I was just trying to read on here on the different literature about, I didn't hear too much discussion on that, about some of the employees that have wife or boyfriends or whatever tested positive and the employee is working here. Well, I think that was touched on as far as an essential employee. Yeah, that would okay. be what they would call the critical infrastructure. The critical infrastructure, and that would be the close contact. If it was a family member or 
you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it might be. And I guess for purposes of how we've discussed this today, we're acting like all the county employees are critical employees. Because if they weren't critical employees, then the guidelines would be something different. Yes. Less, better to be safe than sorry, absolutely quarantine. And again, the Department of Public Health for the state says you need quarantine for 14 days. Yep. Um, but since we're saying that the, the governmental business of, of the people of Benton County is critically important to continue, we're going to, unless you decide, and you can decide something more stringent or, or, or otherwise, we're going to say if they're symptom free and they're wearing PPE, because everyone's going to be wearing their PPE, right? Right? Um, they come to work. But if they, if they have a fever of over 100.4, they're not coming to work, they're into that 10 day quarantine period. Or if they have two of those major symptoms in the checklist at the same time, they're not coming to work for 10 days. And I think this is what you're going to cover for next week's recommendation now. policy with that policy. I just wanted to hear if you folks were of the opinion that everyone's a critical employee, uh, what were your thoughts as to 14 days versus 10 days? What were your thoughts as to how long fever free? And what I'm doing is, is I'm trying to also shorten your meeting a little bit because mm -hmm. I haven't heard any big objections to what Katie was saying. Mm -hmm. Right. But it, I'll have something written up next week if you want to tweak a, a, a number or a line item, but it should be simpler next week. Right. And then you know, we'll hit on the compensation portion. I think we need to hit that. that soon because we have some already currently right. needing to know for payroll. Yeah, if you want to talk about compensation, I think that that would be a a segue into the next part of this. Yes, most definitely. I'll leave it, yeah. Well, it affects some of your employees, though. Oh, yeah. So they're the ones that I'll call over here. You. So I'd like your input on that. I'll, I'll wait. Okay. I'm back. Because okay. they're the ones that call us, too. Yeah. So. Well, we have a motion on the floor for February 2nd. Uh, staying with our, our current policy, if you will, uh, through February 2nd. And all persons entering county facilities to be masked unless extenuating circumstances. So we've got a motion as per that. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right. So at the down, Gary made the motion. Tracy seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So, thank you, Katie. Thank you, guys. Thank Any you other Katie. questions for me? Okay. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Take care now. Keep thank me posted after tomorrow's meeting, though, about funding. Oh, I will. Okay. I will. I'll um, bring it up tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, compensation for mm -hmm. county employees uh, that are off work. There is some information that Haley had sent around and I think what we need to do is have something it may get tweaked but we, we need to, to get something. something out there uh, have you a recommendation no I just read sent? about that act yesterday so that's a new one because that first one was ended in July or whatever. I didn't bring that down, but doesn't that, and I wish there was slightly because I didn't bring it, does this, this does essentially one? say if you're full time, you're going to be the family. You're guaranteed of 80 which hours of, yes. of sick leave which, paid. Which one? That would be in addition to any county um, benefit. No. Um, and then it has to the next time yeah, period one. after that 80 hours. Is that Families First Coronavirus Response Act. It's about oh, employers and paid leave. So. And it's over to and we're going to have to follow that because it's the law. Yeah. And it's effective through December 31st. I don't know when it was put in place, but it was just shared with us yesterday. And again, I don't know if we go back on some of those that have you use their sick and cushion them back and then count it against that public health money. I don't know what you want to do. We haven't had too many that it affected so far, but... There's more and more that it's starting to affect. So I just kind of want to know what everybody has agreed on because it's your employees that are asking us. So. I've got three out right now. Mm -hmm. Two. 
So I'm guessing there's got to be some county that's adopted a resolution implementing this, or do you actually have? Well, that's just the, they refer to this in their resolutions. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to follow this. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to put that in our policy or temporary. But I don't know if we have to go retro. Because some people have gotten their two weeks paid time off already or whatever. That was from the, the CARES, CARES Act. Act. This is a different. They also get up to two weeks of two thirds their pay. Yeah. If they're caring for, a, they have a, a bona fide need to care for like an individual family member that's, that's having to be home with either COVID or COVID quarantine or kids mm -hmm. under the age of 18. And I think, I don't know if this one talks about daycares closing. I know the last one did. Um, so yeah, there's just different provisions, I guess. But. Up to an additional 10 weeks of paid extended family and medical leave. So that would be like the FMLA. At um, two thirds of their rate, if they have to care for a child, school or a care provider is closed or unavailable for reasons related to COVID. This one you can to us. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so. You're just, okay. just going to have to follow it. So why don't we have a resolution for next week that adopts the, you know, the... Are we going to, should we make that retro to those that it's effective? i got to find out when this... Well, there like was an er, wasn't there an earlier version of this? The CARES Act. The regular CARES Act. Didn't it do something pretty similar? And this is just an, not exactly the same. This is just an extension. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is in those situations, I'd make it retroactive. But I'm pretty sure. I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure that this is just an extension of the first version. Um, so we'll probably have to get a list too that we do know that it affected and yeah. adjust their withholdings or, or not their withholdings, but their benefits accordingly. Yeah. So do we need a motion? Well, unless that, he wants to wait until next week, and then we can make it retro. Okay, but, but that gives you a guideline yes, as to what to do? Yes, especially okay. for coding payroll. Yeah, and I don't know the a resolution for that. I think the motion's fine. I um, mean, I have it on the agenda, really. I mean, if it's yeah, the... Yeah, you do a motion to, you know, apply it and make it retroactive to, you know, folks that have previously had it. Um, now, in addition to this, they could then, in, in, in most situations, then use whatever sick leave they have. Under, you know, they have followed regular county policy, but in addition to that, two weeks that they're discussing, and they still have the right to do unpaid family leave mm -hmm. once these are exhausted if they still needed it. Sure. So, okay. They, All right. Democratic nightmare. Mm -hmm. So you would like to see a motion on that? Yeah, I think or we should just do a, a motion implementing the. Uh, uh, family's first coronavirus family's first coronavirus response act. Okay. Um, and you will make it the provisions of it retroactive to any employee that had previously, you know, had to use sick leave under the terms of that act. Mm -hmm. okay. So moved when he just said. <laughs> you, <Sorry. should. laughs> you got that all down, Haley? Always do. <laughs> all right. All right. So if you want to let them know, too. Okay. Tracy made the motion. Gary seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Let's have them make notes on the timesheet, too. For and us. since we're here, super quick, how are we doing on our mask supply at the front door and things like that? I think we've got a pretty good hand sanitizer. I have lots left over from the election oh, that's we downstairs. Got, so. we got some hand sanitizer down there. We need to get we got some of that skunk. It smells yeah. like Woo! tequila. No, it's no. The That's stuff the we use stuff. on our oh, water smells. Yeah, there's one that smells just like tequila. Yeah, there's yeah. one that smells like. Uh, Not that I know. Somebody's cooking some Indian dish. It smells like it's got a lot of tequila. Careful now. Let's just go with something that smells. Yeah. It, smell it. it smells like it has cooking spices in it. It's no, I have good. extra gloves. I have extra masks and face shields. That so. stuff needs to go away. We really need to be clean them as much as we can. And we do have some Clorox wipes. I mean, those are hard to, but we still wipe down. That was a thought. Some of that funding that you just received from the state, could that be used to buy PPE and Yes, that's listed whatnot? in there. Mm -hmm. So Katie's so. going to discuss tomorrow, too, because it's countywide for public health use. 
So, but I think we can still use that for uh, ourselves, or the, we can help we should, care facilities. It's I know, got all Scott that. was busy, but we should bring him in on that because he's mm -hmm. front line for distribution of all that stuff. I'd personally like to see uh, spend a little bit of money to get a better mask for the employees at least. Okay. Um, N95 quality mask, maybe we can't afford to, I don't know. Maybe they're not available enough to supply. No, they're, they're, they're still coming in. They're still but it's certainly for the employees. We should have a stockpile of those. Yeah. They're available, but they are kind of scouting right now. Yeah. We get solicited daily on that yep. stuff. So yep. I just got an email about some stuff this morning. Yep. Yeah. David, do you think you'd have that out prior to the meeting, or maybe we could? Yeah, I'll have you something by Monday. I will do those yet today. Thank okay, you. and then don't forget your FEMA stuff. It's going to be short. It's going to be sweet. For Robin. Good. I noticed she knocked me off the phone call the other day and kept you. Kept yeah, you thank you. Thank you I very would much. I would like to, if possible, if I should get a copy, unless somebody wants to keep it for posterity of what Ron Tippett had prepared. Oh, this? You have it. I can have one of those there. Unless you really need it. Don't you have one? I'll have one. Yeah, I want one that's more sanitized. Okay, thank you. No, I'm not going to do that. I want to ask him about one of my conversation earlier. Once enough, David. Yeah. Will you wait, stick around for a second? But we'll wait till we Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else? No. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.